Hey, what's going on guys? This is Blaine over at B&B Texas Bass Fishing. We are going to go over the July box from Mystery Tackle Box. I got it in like last week, I think. Um, you guys all know who I've got in the box. Right? Comes with this ruler. The Dibble Tips and Tricks. A book on the 10,000 fish Yodo worm. Where to fish things. Right. And then all the goodies inside the actual box. I My first box was like the basic one. And then I decided just to go ahead and upgrade to the pro box. Um, a little bit bigger, obviously. A little more money. So it comes with better things, that's for sure. Hmm. Garlic and salt impregnated. Lake Fork trophy lures. Lures. <laughs> See, it gives you rigging tips on the back of it. They have a nice color. Around here, there's a lot of dirty water. This area, at least Dallas, I don't know about the rest of Texas, but there's a lot of, like, my backyard right here is predominantly clay. So, like, the Trinity, which is, like, half a mile away from me, is dirty water because all this ground has a bunch of clay, and then the water runs over the clay, creating mucky water, dirty water. So, I'm always throwing something kind of green, brown, with flake and stuff like that in there. Occasionally, I'll throw something light, but everything's pretty much like a natural color um, versus, um, you know, those big fluorescent colors. Gugan Squad, Filthy Frog. I actually just bought three of these, and then this came in this month. So, oh well. Um, can never have too many frogs. I think I went for like six. Me and Brandon will probably do uh, What Do We Carry? I, I just went through my bag and kind of started organizing stuff because I was carrying so much weight around the bag because it's nice to have everything but me and Brandon sometimes when we go out there dude we're, we're walking five miles give or take you know it just depends on the day it's a nice color so air, these areas are kind of weird I don't know um, so when it comes to the frog I'm going to throw a frog which you got to get up early you know you want to hit the top water um lately i haven't i threw a frog this last weekend i didn't catch nothing I, i've been having trouble lately um it's hot and humid and muggy and like today it started pouring down rain and then it stopped i don't know the weather's really bipolar right now um i like to stick to a natural uh colored frog but you can just tell like what's jumping in there if you look around and you see what color frogs are hopping in there most times you're over by the vegetation or lily pads or what have you you can see the frogs jumping away from you so just go based off of that if you have like a really green frog then obviously throw more of the lighter green frog but if you have like that dark green then you can get, get away with throwing the black frog i know the frog that i i just got from guggen was the black top with like a kind of like a bluegill bottom it had um, the silver and reds and stuff like that on the bottom, um, like a glitter. So in the areas with the dark frogs, I'll be throwing that. But yeah, I would just base on like your surroundings and what, what kind of frogs and stuff like that you see around there and then go for that because you might catch them off guard if they're, if they're used to seeing a really green frog and then you throw a black frog you might catch one by surprise, but more than likely, they're gonna see, if they have light frogs, you throw a light frog, they're gonna be like, oh, okay, I've been eating these as food, and they're gonna, you know, light up your frog. Headbanger rocker head. Again, it tells you on the back, two piece, three eighths ounce, designed to use with cross bugs and lizards. Um, most of these things are going to tell you what to uh, use with them or how to rig them up, stuff like that. 
Here's a 10,000 fish Yoda worm. Tickle tail. 4.75 inch six pack. All right, I'll get you guys to see the color on there. And again, shows you different ways to rig it. Vertically rigged body, horizontally rigged body, which would be, you got the bladed jig or spinner bait for the vertically rigged body, Texas rig or shaky head for the horizontally rigged body and a drop shot, which the drop shot, if I can open them, I feel like these, Fishing products are hard to open. Drop shot, going through the head. Shows you all right here. The rest are obviously going through the body, hooking back through, kind of making it weedless. And then vertical is going through the middle and I'm poking up through the top of it. It won't be weedless anymore, but, um, well, if I had a hook, I could show you I don't have a hook. But again, nice color. I like the kind of brown. Seems to be most of what I throw is kind of like dark, that darker brownish color. Sticker. Got the puppy out here right now. Bill Lou's MR6 crankbait. Nice colors again, more like a natural. It's probably like what? This is more like a bluegill color. I don't know. Two and a quarter inch body length, half ounce, heavy vibration, long casting, low pitch knock, slow rise. Oh, it's shad. Mid range, six foot, thread fin shad. Again, I started messing around with swimming lures and stuff like that about like two two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, get the hang of it. Uh, we're trying to get on bigger bass and rattling nets, they work good, really good. I mean, you can catch anything on them. You can catch a bluegill on them, whatever. Fish like to light them up, but again, most of the bass that we're getting off of them are smaller. So I'm going into like full lunker logs. At first we were splitting them in half. Now I'm trying to throw the full lunker logs, throwing jigs. Um, the swim bait, stuff like that. I'm trying to just get lit up and get on bigger bass. Um, obviously, it's fun to catch bass and we enjoy fishing, which is that's why we do it. But it's also really fun to catch a big bass. So, messing around with a lot of different things right now, trial and error, see what does good where. We pond hop a lot. Um, that's another thing. Me and Brandon, like together, have probably been to like, I don't know. 40 ponds in the last two months or so, 40 or 50 ponds, just pond hopping, seeing where they're hot, seeing where they're not hot. I mean, you can go to a pond and fish it for three hours and not get bit, and then go to a pond a mile down the road and catch six bass. It's, it's weird, but um, probably get into more river stuff, flowing water. That's how most of my life I fished was either on a lake or in a river 90% of it in a river so probably do that more here the Trinity is like they're not like maintained very well so there's not a whole lot of like access to it and stuff like that and like when it pours it rises so and I know like there people people come down here not that far away from my house but they just do it to go catfishing they'll catch some gar and stuff but um yeah look around I, I've I fished, uh, I think it's Five Mile Creek a few times. No luck, um, but again, it's not—it's not as like maintained. It's hard to like you have to find somewhere where people have went before to make a trail to get down there. Otherwise, just a bunch of vegetation and trees and snakes and stuff like that. So, a whole lot of Google Maps and research is basically what it is. Um, we use a Fish Brain app, but even that, it's. Uh, that's give or take. I mean, you can look at something that says 500 catches and you go over there and ain't nothing. So I'm kind of trying to avoid these overfished areas, that's for sure, because even on the fish brain, I see people, they'll catch six, barely legal. I don't, I don't know the legal here in Texas. I'm assuming it's like California, 12 inches, but 
these barely legal bass and they'll have like six of them on a stringer and it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why people are taking them home, throw them back, let them grow, breed, have more. But um, yeah, with those overfished areas, you kind of will get that fuel fishing at night, taking fish home, stuff like that, when in reality you should just release it. I mean, go. there's stock ponds. All throughout the DFW, there's stock ponds for catfish and trout. Go fish those ponds, catch catfish, boil it or put it in a stew, whatever or catch trout and cook the trout you know i don't leave the bass alone in my opinion um but again that's my opinion we got next gambler go fish gamblerbang.com these look like little craws a mega daddy again they're like natural color darker the browns and the greens with some flake in there, that's always the way to go. It's kind of big, well, hence the name, Big Daddy. So why, I mean, even these appendages right here, it's more than likely this would like get cut down and then put on a hook, so then it's barely sticking out of the jig skirt. Otherwise, you put that on your jig, you're gonna have basically all of this sticking out of your skirting. And last thing is a jig. Lifted jigs. SLM swim jig. 3 aught micro hook. Molded in mad eye. 42 strand premium skirt. Chip resistant paint. I. This has red. I don't have. I don't think I have anything like jig or even like uh, besides flake. It doesn't really have red like this. This has like actual like part of the skirting. It's red. It's a pretty nice jig. Um, a little smaller than I um, the Guggen base, I think. It's, it's not very big. Um, but again, you got the brown. It's kind of like a yellow, yellowish tan. And then you got the green and black. And then that red and black with flake in it. So that'll look good. That'll look good. I mean, even that, you can contrast it. You got the red, and you got the green, and this is not the same color, but this also has green with black flake, and then the green and the red flake on the bottom. So in reality, you could throw these together and they would kind of match up, right? Or you can mix it up and do two completely different colors if you wanted to. Um, but that is all for the box. all this way real quick Brandon is out of town working so he'll be back though so I know he'll fish this weekend I'm gonna try and fish this weekend I might have night I have I've had zero luck fishing at night I don't know what it is zero luck at all and it's kind of frustrating but whatever um, I gotta try and like kind of fit in the schedule. I've been working a bunch, so it kind of uh, eliminates things. You know, I gotta uh, work on Saturdays and we normally fish on Saturdays. So I, when we started, I had taken, you know, like four Saturdays off so we can go fish, get content, you know, start pond hopping, checking things out. But now um, down some guys, moving things around. So now I kind of gotta fill in, uh, which is fine. But I also enjoy fishing with Brandon. You know, I'd rather fish with him and him with me and have a good time and stuff. But can't always be like that. So we can go over all these. Where to fish is basically telling you where to fish the filthy frog, right? This isn't the frog. This is the frog I just bought that I was talking about. That kind of like that bluegill bottom. Um, it's shiny, has a different color. This is the frog that came in the box. Um, but it's just telling you where to fish, grass line and weeds, so point, rip wrap, tree stumps, around and under docks, under bridges, down trees, submerged timber, matted grassy cover. Pro tips, always wait a second before setting the hook and allow a hollow body, uh, hook on a hollow body frog. A short pause gives the fish time to fully take the bait while providing you 
time for a strong hook set. Also, you can trim one of the Filthy Frog skirt and legs shorter than the other to increase the bait's walking ability. So it's basically saying when you're reeling in and you're jerking it and reeling at the same time, you're gonna create the walk. Saying if you trim it down, it's gonna pull to one side more than the other. It's gonna walk a little bit better. That's all that's saying. Um, and as for weighting and setting the hook, if you watch on our our video of uh, at Six Flags, perfect example of waiting to set the hook. Especially on the top water bite, you get excited, you get antsy, they light it up and you go, oh! But then you just pull it out of their mouth. So it is definitely better to wait for a second, let them grab it. They have to bite down. It's a hollow body, so it's soft. Once they bite down, it exposes the hooks. Now it can get latched in them. But as soon as they come up, they can grab the skirt. And you be like, oh dang. But you're just pulling the, the frog away from them. They're not actually hooked in there. So to avoid that, yeah, wait a second. And it's like a whole pamphlet. Oh, it's not that many pages. Again, where to fish. This one, I would read it for sure. I've already went through it. It's basically saying where to fish it with what setup. All right, you can see all those pinpoints and the different colors and this trailer, text bridge, shaky head, drop shot, right? And then you open it up, it's gonna tell you how to fish it, the key features, you know, what it does, why they made it the way that they made it and how good it is. And then it's telling you like trailer, how. Pair the Yoda worm with spinner baits, bladed jigs, and swim jigs for added bulk and action. Win. Whenever you need to bulk up your presentation, especially when mimicking a bait fish, wear rocks, docks, stumps, grass, and weed lines, shallow water areas where bass are feeding. So it's basically telling you that on all of them. The Texas rig, the shaky head, and the drop shot, and then of course a map of a lake, pond, lake, basically showing you like, hey, like this, grass line, weedless, right on the grass line, trailer, right? A little bit off the grass line, Texas rig, okay? Tree stumps, again, trailer, Texas rig. Um, under the bridge, shaky head, and a drop shot, right? So you look over this, next thing, you rig it up, you go out to a pond, you already know what you're looking for when that's rigged up, right? You have it all set up, maybe from the last time you were fishing, box, whatever. you're setting it up, and you set it up in your garage, you head out to the pond, you already know exactly what you're looking for. If that doesn't work out, then you can change the setup. If you're just determined to catch something on the Yoda worm, change your setup, and then you go to the grass lines. If you're under the bridge, you go to the grass lines with the new setup, you know, a trailer or the Texas rig, and try it that way. And then last, the Dibbles tricks, tips and tricks. Yeah, basically, gives you tips on frog fishing and then how to fish a swim jig in two minutes right so you go through it it tells you what to do rod reel line again his tips you know from what they know and all that stuff they're just gonna give you basically an understanding every fisherman is gonna do something different they're just trying to give people a baseline right if you can't figure out something's going wrong or what, what's going on, what, what you're doing wrong, you can read this and then base what you do off of what he sends you and his tips and tricks, right? And then you can go off of that, you build off of that. Then you make the adjustments to how you do it because every fisherman is gonna do something different, hands down. Everybody knows that. But this will give you a base to go off of and then you build off of that base, right? That's what these are good for. But hopefully we get some good content for you for next week um I, like i said try and go out um saturday might night fish i don't know i have a game friday night and then saturday i'm working in the morning so i know that um so maybe i, I might try and hit saturday night sunday morning or saturday night sunday night i gotta figure out what all is going on and uh, what brand's up to and see if we can work something out and get you guys some good content. If not, then I end up fishing nighttime, middle of the week, so I got, which is fine. Um, I just prefer to do it on the weekends. Uh, but we'll figure it out. We'll get some videos up, some good videos, some better content. 
we're kind of working on things. I mean, I want to buy a kayak and stuff like that. Brandon wants to get a kayak or we get a boat or stuff like that. But the reality is we also have other things like this is my house that I own that my wife is currently painting and Brandon's trying to buy a house. And so we have other things going on. So it's not, it's not, uh, a need at this point to go and buy a kayak do we need one sure of course we could hit a lot more fishing spots and get a lot better content content with the kayak but right now things are going elsewhere um but that is the mystery tackle box pro for july um like i said they'll, they'll send it every month you pay it on a subscription i know you, you can pay for the whole year and get a discount you can get it cheaper if you just pay for the whole year up front i do it month to month so I think it's um, 40 bucks, I think, for the Pro Box. And then they email, you set up your account and stuff like that. They email you when your box is shipped, your box is ready. They'll email you when your box is delivered. So there's no guessing on it. They let you know, like this one, they said, hey, you know, shipping's kind of out of our hands. Everything's slow right now because of everything going on. Uh, but they notified me that, hey, your box might be a few days late, no big deal. They let me know and then um you can adjust and you can add to your box like they'll they'll send me an email like two weeks before and they'll be like hey add on day what do you want to add to your box you could they'll give you a list stuff like that you can add stuff on your box that way they send it with your box so it's one shipment it all comes in with your box you just add it on there um and then obviously besides the mystery tackle box you can go on their website and they have a million things to choose from anything you think of fishing wise um so I would definitely go over there, check it out if you fish. Um, it's definitely a good thing. They don't. This is the bass box, but they have boxes for any kind of fishing. So you just go decide what what species you want, and they'll send you a box for that species. It's pretty awesome. Um, and if you're just getting into fishing, again, like that's why I'm doing it now. I mean, I have a lot of tackle now, but once I moved here, I left all my fishing stuff in California, so I didn't have any fishing stuff. So I had to start from scratch. So. I bought a lot, but this also helps me slowly add to the fishing collection, right? Um, so that way you're not worried about forking over 800 bucks in baits at one time. You're slowly getting it, you know, yeah, you're spending the money every month, but it's a small increment com compared to, you know, some people can't afford to do the large sum at one time. So it is convenient. It's nice. You don't got to worry about it. You know, it's coming. Uh, I would definitely go over there, mrtacklebox.com and check it out that will be all for today i hope you guys all have a great week um go rip some lips have fun stay cool hot and uh make sure you upload everything uh, make sure to like comment and subscribe uh, i know i think still most of our views aren't even subscribers so make sure to subscribe give a like helps us and uh and check out our Instagram. We have an Instagram account, BNB Texas Bass Fishing. Same as the YouTube channel. Uh, you go over there. We post pictures. I need to post more. I need to start posting more. Um, but go check it out. Like and subscribe. And have a great weekend.